All right, today we're going to look at universal and standard LMBs that you can hook up to your KU band satellite dish. All right, so I found this LMB on eBay, and at first I, want, I wanted a dual output uh, KU band LMB so I can send this dish's uh, signals to different two different points, points in my house. And with the dual output, I can watch the vertical and the horizontal re, um, polarity on whatever uh, transponder I want. You can loop out, but the problem with looping out is it will uh, it will have a dominant receiver, and the dominant receiver will set the polarity to either horizontal and vertical, so you won't be able to switch between the channels that are on vertical transponders and that are on horizontal. So with the dual output, I really like that. I, I'm able to do this. Now, this is a universal LMB. So what that means is when you go to your receiver, your input will have to be 10600 as opposed to a standard LMB's input. But I believe it does get lower frequencies uh, that are on, uh, on, on different uh, KU band uh, setups. It does not do circular. Someone, uh, some people have asked me that. I don't believe it does circular. KU band, you'll need a, uh, a circular KU band LMB, and I think you have to put your circular input frequency to the circular input frequency. But I don't really cover that because there's not a whole lot of circular free to air circular channels in North America. They should be. I mean, then people can get free satellite TV with a with an 18 inch dish, which, which would be great. But unfortunately, we don't see a whole lot of that in North America. And then there's dishes like this one, which uh, in Canada is very common to find a secondhand Shaw Direct Star Choice or an old Star Choice dish. And the older ones will have a, uh, a standard LMB, which will be the input frequency will be 10750. And some of the newer ones that have the uh, oval shaped uh, part on the LMB will have a universal input and you'll, you'll end up uh, putting 10600. 10, for those. So I was shopping around on eBay. So over the years, I picked up a few different LMBs for my KU band satellite dish. So recently, I picked this one up because this one here, my Avenger that I bought from Fridge FTA quite a few years back. I don't know something was going funny on it, and it wasn't wasn't working anymore. But it could have been moisture on the inside, and I haven't worked that out. So I just ended up getting another one, getting this one here. But this one here is a universal LMB. You know, that, Nice thing is it actually says there right on the top, a digi digital KU band twin universal twin LMB. So it has two outputs. It's actually kind of similar to this one. It just has a very ugly orange <laughs> tip on the LMB. What I go by on this thing here is I got this on the dish there. It's LMB low frequency, which 9.75. So on a lot of my receivers, receivers it will just say 10,600 gigahertz or 10,000, 10,600 megahertz. So on the box here, it just has it in gigahertz. So it's 10.6 gigahertz, same, same thing. So that's where you're going to want to go on your receiver. That's how you'll be able to tell it. Now, sometimes on these LMBs, it'll say on the box here for this, for the Avenger, the, uh, this is a standard LMB, so you set your settings to standard, and the input frequency should be 10,750 megahertz or 10.75 gigahertz. Hopefully, I didn't mess up the numbers because I'm I'm horrible with numbers. Amico, same thing. This is a standard LMB, not a universal. Now, a lot of these boxes, they're kind of like uh, HD. You know how you get this uh, in when these LMBs, they'll say they're HD ready. Most of these LMBs will work with HD. It's just they're trying to you know. Uh, it's just like basically on a box for an antenna telling you that it's an HD or 4K antenna. Actually, you could probably get 4K with these things too. So even if you have an old one laying around, it will it should be able to work. So for KU band, now this is a C KU band LMB. So if you're doing a C band, a KU band with your C band dish, this one I got for, uh, from DMS International. It actually worked out pretty decently for me. So as you can see, it's very fine print here though. But no, oh, L M L O O. There it is there, at the bottom there. See that? 10, 600, 10 or 10.6 gigahertz would be the low frequency. So that's that's how I was able to get this tuned in here. So I, at first I was looking at this frequency up here, the 
LMB frequency, but the low frequency was the frequency to get. The L low frequency is what I use for the input frequency on these LMBs. So it's 5150 gigahertz is what, well, 515 or 5150 is what I entered in on my receiver to get the C band working, and then also to get the KU band working, I entered on the receiver. Uh, giga, um, gigahertz, megahertz, well, 10 gigahertz, it's 1,000 megahertz is what the receiver was reading that as. So I'll, I'll unbox my Avenger. I'm going to try my Avenger again because I had this outside, and here's what happened to my Avenger. The plastic's breaking off of it, and for whatever reason, it stopped working. Do I still have this? So you might end up with this on your LMB where the sticker for the frequency input falls off. This thing kind of drops down so that it keeps the water. If you've lost the box, you can always, sometimes you can look up the model number. It's kind of sad. This was a really good LMB too. It, I don't know what's gone wrong with it. I haven't put it back up to see if it'll work again. The cracking is not good. Now, what I've done with my other LMB, I've done this in another video, is I just took electric tape and covered it to protect it from being weathered and watered. That's one thing I'd recommend uh, if you got this situation, because I got an LMB that's working really well. It just had the, pl the plastic around it is all broken up. I'm going to put that back in, back in the box. Now, the Zamico, the Zamico looks weathered too, because I'm trying different LMBs. And these LMBs are not that expensive. I think I picked up a few of these LMBs, and they're like 20, 30 bucks on eBay, Amazon. I, I like eBay because they, they were being, you know, eBay, it helps like small sellers where, you know, Amazon's putting a lot of the small sellers out of business. So I'm kind of, uh, I lean toward eBay a little bit more because it helps those people having stores in their houses. So they should be, if the weather hasn't worn off the sticker on your LMB, if you bought a brand new one, it should say the input frequency. The L low frequency is probably, well, that's not focus at all. But the, on this one here, this one here, I'll have a link to this one if I can still find it on eBay uh, to check it out and help me by clicking on my referral links. Uh, so this one is 10600. So that's the frequency that you enter in on this for universal settings. Now you can have 10, 650 or, or sometimes they can be 9.75 dash. 10 10.6 gigahertz or 10,600 megahertz. So that's how you can uh, diff uh, tell if it's uh, if it's in the right spot. So a lot of the newer LMBs, although I talked to some people online, they've been picking up LMBs off uh, someplace online and they've been finding uh, standard LMBs. So whether you're using a standard or or a universal LMB, just watch out for the input frequency on the box that will help you <laughs> save you from getting sunburned staying out in the sun trying to figure that out enigma satellite receiver you can i have this one set up for standard which would be 10 750 and it just has the lof low oscillator frequency as uh 9 750 and then the threshold as 11 700 and that will work with uh like uh standard lb that i have uh aimed at galaxy 19. this is also with the enigma os system which i'm not a fan of the one thing it doesn't have like a signal while you're cha changing your frequencies and your threshold it doesn't give you a preview of the signal quality so with the open atv programs uh, programmers out there that's one thing i'd love to see an, an update on this on open atv over here on 99 west i have it with the universal lmb which has the low oscillator frequency of 9750 and the low oscillator frequency high of uh 10 600 and this is another satellite receiver i have it's my amico and i just show in here how it would look with a standard lmb setting with the input frequency of 10 750 which is a common frequency that you'll ha want to have for a setup with a with this type of lmb also i highly recommend if you're setting up a dish go to linksat or tvrosat.com and enter in the frequencies to the satellite dish so that you can if you enter in the frequencies to the satellite receiver just to have a re uh, reference so you know you're aiming at that particular satellite in that transponder so the signal quality will come up as you move your dish across the sky and lock onto that satellite and if you just do one or two transponders and lock onto it 
At that point, you can do a blind scan and then just scan in the rest of the transponders. So on this, this is my handheld receiver that I got off of uh, Amazon. I've done a review of it. I'll have a link in the in the video for this. And this is the one that I use to, it's like a cheap $60, $50 uh, satellite receiver that also will work as a receiver, but also it's a handheld Game Boy sized device that you can take outside and connect to your satellite dish while you're setting it up and i highly recommend something like that because just because I, one thing too is they're so inexpensive and, e and easy to, to work with come to free satellite tv.net or the free satellite tv page here on facebook and join our groups and discussion groups about free satellite tv and enjoy some of the videos that we link here to help you learn about free satellite tv so this is my channel so it's not going to show up there stuff yeah so subscribe to my channel there's also up here there's like a facebook link you can come like my facebook page i have a twitter page too i uh, i'm more of a facebook person but i post most of when i post stuff out i put it up on twitter too i have a patreon and have a paypal donate if you want to donate to my channel and help me do what i do and I have all sorts of information videos about technology, satellite technology, Linux technology, how to set up your own um, HDMI to coax cable video distribution system so that you can have, to have like your own TV channel. Or if you have a church, for example, and you want to send video like from your camera to like other rooms in the church and you want to split it in multiple monitors and stuff, you can use, where is that thing? There it is. There, use the Thor uh, Pity HDMI RF modulator. This thing will send like you can take any video source and send it anywhere, anywhere you want. And uh, yeah, so I did this thing here, this video where I just tested this TP link because I would, I you know, what, why what wireless being around Wi-Fi can fry you, and so this is a good alternative. Uh, yeah, and. Um, I did a video on geostationary. I just rambled in this video. So yeah, kind of like this video. If you're into MIDI stuff and Linux, you want to hook a MIDI, old school MIDI keyboard to a Linux laptop. There's a video on that for a five dollar device that does that. And um, a satellite receiver I endorse is the Edison OS Mayo. If you're a Linux person, this would be a great receiver for you. It uh, streams. It does all the bells and whistles. It does 4K. It's an amazing receiver. Uh, some people are going to ask me, here's a video for what is a very common question I get, and I always have to send a link to people, is can I use my Dish Network Dish or my Bell Dish to get free to air? And short answer is, uh, it's a long answer. Um, but, but if you have a dish like this, the answer is no, like this dish here of two circular KU LMBs, they won't work with Galaxy 19. And I get that question a lot. So watch that video. Uh, it will explain how you can get the appropriate dish so you can get free to air channels. And I do some rants. <laughs> I did some reviews. I did a review on my drone, which I love my drone. I play with this all the time. And I actually bought another drone just like it. And then maybe the next model up and it works great. And I talk about DigiNets, which you can get for over the air TV. I did a video about Orbi TV. Uh, it's a service I can't get in Canada, but it's, uh, it works with over the air and it works with uh, a subscription service that uses KU band and you can get their dish and uh, use it for, uh, if you want to get some basic stuff. Now the H, the video quality on Orbi TV is not the greatest, but Hey, it's decent enough. I do s several, like if I find a new channel, I, uh, on satellite, I'll do a video about that satellite and do a scan um virus scanning programs for your computer if you're running linux and uh, various Linux things also done a video about uh transferring vhs tapes to uh, a device that's the size of a, s a smartphone here this is DigiNow digital video creator so yeah this is all turning into an ad for my uh for my youtube channel but hey check out all these videos these will make you uh these videos will bless you and make you smart like me so check them out <laughs>